everyone. My name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream live on Twitch on Mondays and Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific time if you're in the US. That's 10 a.m. if you're in Australia or 1 a.m. if you're in the UK. I hope everybody's doing well. Copy and save our forge. <laughs> Remember guys, uh, if you do miss the live streams, you can catch up at any time by clicking the videos tab on my Twitch channel, or you can go to my YouTube channel forward slash does 3 d uh, Thank you Hellforge, but there's the link for the Discord server if you want to become a Fildo and join the does 3 d Discord, click that link Hellforge has just popped into Twitch chat, or go to the About Me section on my Twitch channel and in the panels down the bottom, you'll find a blue graphic, click that at any time to get an invite to the Discord. Uh, we're going to be working on a game called The House in the Hollow, which is available to wishlist now on Steam. Again, thank you Hellforge, click the link that he popped into Twitch chat. Or go to the About Me section, go to the panels, and you'll find a graphic that'll take you to the Steam store page. <laughs> and my website, of course. If you want to know more about me and who I am and what I do, you can go to my website, which is does 3 d with a .com on the end of it. Okay. So yesterday we were working on the outhouse section. We're going to continue doing that today. Hey Smurf, it's good to see you. I see you uh, popped an image in the gallery of the um, of the program you're working on creating. It looks really cool. I'll show it just before I sign off today. But it does. It does, looks really interesting, actually. How's it coming? How's it, how's the programming going, Smurf? Just gonna get a drink of water before I have a drink of coffee. And Sniper Girl, hey, it's good to see you as well. Uh, Sniper Girl says, <laughs> Oh God, the old man that won't shut up and do work and do any work. Oh, nice cold water. <laughs> Tidy you as well, Sniper Girl. Uh, Smurf says, I'm too dumb for this. You're not too dumb for this. You've made good progress by the look of it. I think it's looking good. Not that I'm, <laughs> not that I'm quite sure is what, what it is exactly you're doing. What, what is it you're making again? Smurf says, um, by sheer coincidence, a worthless algorithm combined with a buffer race condition <laughs> okay, actually makes a sort of interesting result, <laughs> aside from the artifacts. <laughs> Ooh, a buffer race condition. You want to be careful of them. You'll get this, Smurf, and it's looking interesting. Yeah, I like that. I think the image looks really interesting. And if you want to see what I'm talking about and don't want to wait for me till the end of the stream, jump on the Discord server and look in the gallery. Uh, I love looking at the work you guys make, regardless of what it is. So pop it an image in the gallery. If you don't want me to show it on stream, because I do like to, uh, just tell me when you uh, post the image and I won't. Snappy Girl says, no clue what she said. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we're going to continue working on the outhouse. In Unreal. The only change I've made since you guys were watching yesterday was I put a door on. So you will be able, able to open up the door in the outhouse. Okay, I guess what, what will we do now? Um, let's bring some steps in I think so. Smurf says race conditions are bad. They are bad. Uh, it means one or more process threads are trying to operate at the same Da on the same data simultaneously, yeah. You want to try and avoid any sort of race condition. Okay, I think I'm just looking at the landscape here to get an idea of what we want to do. And I think maybe around about here somewhere, some steps might be good. Smurf says the uh, result actually looks worse if I remove the race condition. <laughs> you don't want to have the race condition there. You know it's bad. <laughs> but that looks interesting. The image uh, that it created does look interesting. Hang on. Just got to fix my eyelash here. It's going in my eye. So let's bring some steps in I think. Um, I did download some from Quicksort from Megascans. Um, we'll see what that looked like. 
don't know if they're going to work or not, but we'll find out. Where did I put them? That's the next question. Stone steps. Steps two, I think. Hmm. Let me let me see if I can. Yeah, I think it's steps two or is it steps three? <sighs> ah, I'll go to the folder. The thumbnail will tell me. Not that one. I don't think it's that one. So it must be steps three. Yes, yeah, steps three. Okay. Steps three. Oh, it's called out how steps. I probably should have paid more attention to what I was doing. <laughs> okay, now let's turn off virtual texturing. Let me pull this over. Mum, 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 mum. Out how steps. Let's rename the material. If we don't, if I don't like it or it doesn't work here, um, we can always use the steps somewhere else. That's so not a big deal. And we have to change oops, change this from virtual color to color. Uh, I also want to bring in the normal and the uh, roughness. Programmers, there we go. <laughs> I had to think about it for a minute. Oh, okay. Now I need to also swap these out from virtual textures. Yes, yes, yes. It's complaining, complaining, complaining. And this one. Let me change this one to a normal normal. Uh, uh, uh. No, we just want color. Okay. Uh, let's have a look at these steps now, I think. Let's just do a quick save all to be on the safe side and I can have a quick sip of my coffee. Let's scale them up. rotate them a little bit landscape with um with grass and vegetation so I'm more worried about just getting the thing positioned correctly and we're gonna have to do something about the back here. I have a couple of options I could move the steps over to this side. Hmm. 
might be a bit more interesting. I, I want to try and avoid putting the steps like directly in, in a, a line of sight. Um, because it'll make it more interesting for the player if they sort of meander around. It was the same sort of thing we did with when we did the uh, path at the front that went from the steps to the main gate. We didn't go in a straight line, we sort of meandered the path around a bit. So, same sort of deal here. I want to make it so it's a bit more interesting for the player so we won't put the path directly in the line of sight. And if we move the steps over to here then I won't have to worry about putting a, um, like we did with the front steps where you had to put like a platform in. I might actually uh, also just jump into Photoshop and do a bit of correction to the texture. I just think it's not quite right. It's very dark. You can see it's a really dark sort of dark green. I might lighten it up a little bit. Now you can you can actually do some corrections inside of um inside of the texture itself like you've got brightness and vibrance and saturation they're all available in the in unreal you don't have to take it into photoshop necessarily um let's see what if we can get it a bit better by using this instead of using photoshop i generally like to use photoshop because i have a bit more control in photoshop than in the actual texture here but we'll see we'll see what it's like let's raise the brightness to 1.5 Uh, this area is in shadow anyway, so... Sniper Girl says, did you break something without permission again? What? <laughs> what did I break? What, what's, what's going on? What have I broken, Sniper Girl? <laughs> I'm confused. What did I break? What you talking about? Oh, the material. Oh, yeah, no, the material. Yeah, no. <laughs> Again, because when you generally when you down, well, I've set it up so when I download uh, Mega Scans from Quixel, uh, it downloads 4K versions of the textures, and and that's because I, most of even you, you notice even when I do the painting and substance paint Adobe Painter, get it right. Um, I always save them out as 4K texture, but the program is automatically downscaling it to 2K for the game. But that's so that if in the future we need to use 4K textures, we have them. <coughs> we have them ready. But what that means is anything by default in, in Unreal that's 4K or above, uh, Unreal automatically turns on virtual texturing. And I don't like virtual texturing. I think it's a bit too buggy in Unreal. Uh, it, not perform, doesn't perform really well. Maybe in some situations it's fine, but for, from what we've, the testing we've done at the game studio, it's not something we want to use in the game. It's too slow to load in. Um, yeah, not good generally. So uh, I, I have to turn virtual texturing off. And when I do that, because when Unreal brings it in and turns it into a virtual texture, the, um, the sampler type gets changed to virtual. So, we have to switch it back. N not broken, not, not, not really broken, but you know. You know what I'm trying to say, I'm sure. Um, yeah, I still see, even with changing the brightness in the texture here, even if I whack it up to twice as bright as it should be, It's still not, I don't know, it's just, it seems a bit too muddy and dark to me. So I think what, instead what we'll do is we'll take the actual original texture back to one. And we're going to jump into Photoshop and do it there. I always find it's easier to work in Photoshop than trying to mess around with those sliders inside of uh, the texture in Unreal. I think I already have Photoshop open. So let's bring in the texture for the steps. I hear the army 
And the first thing we'll do is we'll do our levels on it. Because you can see in the histogram here that it's not really set correctly for the histogram. Like you shouldn't have it set all the way down here when there's no, no information at all in the image. So the first thing I always do is pull it up so that that fits the histogram. And you see how much that brightened that up to begin with. So before we do anything, we'll just um, save, save out the texture again. Bring it back into Unreal. Again, it's turned into a virtual texture, which we don't want. You, I could turn that off. There is an option to turn off virtual texturing. Like I could set it to say 8K and that wouldn't do it. I probably should do that. It would probably make my life easier. And that means, is the material broken? No, I don't think it has. Okay, let's see what else we can do. Let's use an adjustment layer instead though this time. I'm going to go with the brightness and contrast. Snappy Girl says, you wouldn't do that because you want to complain too much. True, true, true. I'm going to pull up on the brightness here a bit. You've got to be careful with uh, changing the brightness and things when you're working with a PBR material. It can cause issues, so just be aware of that. I'm also going to uh, throw an adjustment layer down on the saturation. I'm just going to pull back on the saturation a little bit. I think it's just a little bit too green. Now what do they save as? Do they save as JPEGs? Yeah, they do. I don't understand really why. Oh, anyway. I generally work, work in PNG, but um, it tends to pull them down as JPEGs. I think there is an option I can change in, in Bridge for that. I think the reason it's looking quite dark here is I've, it's because we're in shadow. It's, does not look quite right to me. You see how much brighter it is in Photoshop? There's something strange going on with the import, I think. Uh, so I'm just going to save this out again as a different file name, as a PNG. Um, we're going to call it step three. And let's check that by bringing it back into Unreal. Now, I don't know, you probably can't see that because I'm in the way, but it's not bringing in the changes from Photoshop for some reason in the re-import. Now, again, I think this is one of the bugs with virtual texturing. It's just a little buggy overall, virtual texturing in Unreal. So now what we're going to do is we're going to swap out the one that's not working correctly for this one. You see how much lighter that is? And again, I'll just turn my camera off so you can see the difference and see what I'm talking about. That's the, the original, even after we did color correction and re-imported it, that's what it should be looking like. And it's not re-importing correctly. So again, I don't know if that's a bug with Unreal, with virtual texturing, it would not surprise me, because I have found virtual texturing to be quite buggy. Oh, uh, Snappy Girl says, you mean things in shadow look darker? I know, but you see how much lighter that looks now, now that we did some correction on the texture. I mean, it's in shadow, but it's in an open environment, so there's lots of um, scattered light. It should not be coming up that dark. 
the texture is just too dark for the asset from Quixel. Uh, so yeah, I've, I found that with with a few of the textures, I've had to change change them because they've just not been right. Either the color hasn't been correct, or the color is correct because it's a photogrammetry asset, but it hasn't been the color that I want. So I've, I've just done. I always do some color correction in Photoshop usually. All right, what are we going to do now? Um, I'm just trying to decide if I want to do any... Like, some assets can look really interesting. Like, this one's actually looks like it's slightly angled anyway. But sometimes it can be really interesting just to, like, throw the asset askew a little bit so it's not horizontal. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just makes the asset look a bit more interesting, particularly things like steps where they could have moved a little bit after settling. Smurf says, some assets look really interesting when they're neon pink. <laughs> you sure you don't mean to make the steps solid gold, Smurf? How about some solid gold steps? Another girl says, oh my god, all assets look interesting when they're non-pink. Do it. Do it now. <laughs> uh, no, we won't go with neon pink or gold. <laughs> yes, no, no, no neon pink or gold, I'm afraid. <clears throat> so I think we can probably get away with not putting... Oh, uh, we do have a little bit there. So what I might do is I might just bring them over a little bit. There we go. So we can get away without having to put a, um, a ledge up here after the step. <laughs> Snappy girl hunts subs because they won't make them neon pink. <laughs> okay. Now. Now, 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 now. Is there any other asset I want to put here before I start putting grass and stuff in? Um, probably not. Again, I'm just pulling back so I can get a bit of an overall look at the scene. Steps that way, up that way. Hmm. I'm just wondering if we should go with a series of steps here. We could do that. We could have it meandering through like here to here to here. Because that uh, outhouse is on the top of a pretty sort of steepish hill. Maybe not. But maybe what we'll do is instead of going all that, that is quite a meander. Maybe we'll take the steps and we'll put another set down here. So we're, we're sort of going up this way like that. even make these a little bit bigger. And let's rotate them in the opposite direction.
Any little hole like that, well we could pull them back further or we could just uh, use uh, vegetation to hide that. We'll do a bit of both. It says copy and save. Good idea. We'll do the save and then we'll have the copy. Sniper Girl says you don't need to save. Unreal never crashes. <laughs> I don't say never, but it has been pretty stable. Uh, so I think in the whole time we've been working, I, the, the engine's probably only crashed maybe three or two, three, maybe four times. And that's over a period of like, you know, a long time. So it is pretty stable. Uh, I do have to actually say that I haven't uh, used um, Unreal Engine 5 because it's in beta and I don't use beta software. But I have looked at a couple of uh, YouTube videos of people using it. I really do like the way they've redesigned the interface. The interface in Unreal 5 looks real. I'm not that this is bad, but the interface in UE5 is nice and clean. They've done a good job on the uh, on the design of the user interface in, in UE5. So I am looking forward to using it eventually when it comes out of beta. Okay, I guess what we should probably do is get some vegetation in. So let's go to, where is it, where is it, where is it? I can never find it. They always move stuff around. Where did they put it again? Not on the settings, is it? No. Modes, that's it. <laughs> go into landscape mode. Actually, no, we don't want landscape. I'm just waiting for it to finish compiling its shaders. Uh, we want foliage mode. Uh, let's see, what have we got here? Uh, none of them are selected, no. So let's go with... Um, Let's, I guess, go with the grass one to begin with. Let's see what that looks like. Now, there is an option again. I wanted, I, I did actually come across it, and I can't remember where to turn off. So it doesn't actually put, uh, populate the foliage on the actual rocks. Where was it? Was it under filter? Yeah, I think it's under filter here. 
you remember how we were having a problem yet yeah, allow foliage to be placed on static meshes how we were having the grass being um, added to things like trees so yeah they moved it to under it never used to be here it actually used to be down here um, we want it on the landscape but we don't want it on the static mesh here so that means I should be able to paint up into a corner without it painting over the grass uh, painting over the rock I'm not going to paint up into the corner because I'm going to go with a longer grass in there. Basically what I want to do though is to try and um, block out the pathway here. So we want the grass to come up to here and maybe over here. Where's my other step? Over there. Okay. So let's meander it around this way. a different grass type now. Rough grass, snake weed, thick grass. I can't remember which one's which. Which one's the thick and <laughs> what the difference between them is. So we've got a rough grass and then we've got a thick grass. Let's try, see what the thick grass is. No, what that is, that's a different colored grass. You see, it's a darker color. Uh, but that's okay, because that could be interesting for us just to do a bit of a mix through to break up some of the green, so it's not all the same color green. I don't know if, it's, if you can see that on the screen, but there's two-tone color to the grass in that. I'm just going to add a bit of this other coloured grass. Yeah, maybe here you can see it a bit better. I can get that out of the way. There's a, that green grass and the, and the one I've just added is more of a yellow green. Let me just undo that. Okay, so that means the one that I do want is probably this one here, which is the rough grass. Yep, that's the one. So now, now I'm just adding the uh, the rough grass, which is the taller grass in the background, up against the rock. Just undo that. Just trying to avoid going over my pathway too much.
trying to look back I'm just trying to move in the shadows Yesterday, tomorrow I'm searching for a way I can't tell the difference no. Normally with landscapes, a big thing at the moment is procedural generation. And Unreal actually has a lot of really interesting tools to actually do procedural landscaping, um, which we are using the game studio. We're using it for the first landscape, but because I want these areas to be more unique, this is the reason I'm doing this by hand. Procedural landscape generation does a nice job. You know, it's a computer deciding where to put stuff basically. Um, but me doing it by hand like this gives me much more artistic control. Now you can still go through, you can still use procedural for an overall layout of the landscape of the trees and the bushes or whatever, and then go in by hand and, and start um, making it a bit more bespoke. Um, that's a valid way to work. I prefer to do it this way where I, on this landscape anyway, which is the main landscape because it's where the, the actual building is, which where you spend most of your time running around the building and the landscape here. Uh, I want this one to be much more bespoke. So I'm doing it all by hand. So it's, I have much more artistic control, but we are using um, procedural for the first landscape and I'll go over it or me or one of the other guys will go over it by hand just to make a few interesting spots um, and the third landscape we're probably going to do by hand as well so first landscape procedural with a little bit of hand painting this main landscape here basically all hand painted and the third landscape will probably end up being hand painted as well because it's the ending landscape so I, I'm just I just wanted to mention that you can use procedural tools to do all of this you don't have to do it by hand I like doing it by hand I like the artistic touch I can give to it by doing it by hand. But if you've got a huge landscape, say, you know, say that the player could get all the way back here to these mountains, then doing it by hand is just impossible. So you'd be there forever. Uh, but because our landscapes are quite um, unique and not that large, I can, I can get away with doing it by hand. So yeah, I just, just want to do sort of like mention that. Okay, let's go behind here and let's put some grass through here as well. Uh, and so what I do is I work in an area, a small area at a time. I don't try and like decide I'm going to paint the grass all the way through here. I, I, I move to a section, I frame it up. And that helps me decide how I want to design the landscape around the scene. Whereas procedurally, it will just generate everything everywhere at the same time. Okay. <laughs> I think I was going to take a bath. Totally won't take my phone in like the last two times. Honest. <laughs> well, just make sure you don't drop that phone in the bath. That's the important thing. Okay, um, so for this little section here, I think it's probably enough bits of grass. We can move on to move to bringing in some trees, I think. Maybe just a bit more grass through there. And maybe a bit through here. And I might put some through here. Some around here. Hey, Andrew and Dust, it's good to see you. Hope you're doing well. How are you settling in? Are you? Slowly unpacking. I know when I, whenever I move, because Andrew Voss has just moved, it always takes me at least a week and a half to get everything re uh, unpacked and back where it should be. And how's the new CPU? I didn't ask you about it enough yesterday because our Android Voss just bought a 5950, an AMD 
5950. Sweet CPU. Snappy Girl says, uh, it's a droid, not a phone, an iPhone, can handle a bit of water. <laughs> okay, so it's an Android, not an iPhone. Alrighty, so let me think here. How do I want to do this? I must remember I've got to put something here too, so <laughs> to cover up the fact that we can see through our rocks. So we'll worry about that in a minute. We're trying to frame up this scene here to begin with. Okay, let me start doing a bit of placement by hand and not using the paint tool here. So I'm going to go back to our normal editor. Let's do a quick save. And I can have another copy. Android Lost says, well, the worst thing about moving is packing and unpacking. How tired it is. Uh, so I'm slacking on unpacking. That's fair enough. You are correct. Packing and unpacking is, is one of the worst things. Uh, let's go into our terrain. No, not terrain. We want foliage, I think. Foliage. Mm, let me see. Let me see. Now I did create. There's a, there's another section of landscape on the other side that we're going to move to after we've done here after we've done the outhouse. And I created these trees to sort of like frame up where the player wants to go to. But there's no reason we can't use one of those trees over here because it's on the other side of the landscape and the player won't won't know that it's a copy if you know if they're right next to each other they they probably know but but we could rotate it anyway but uh, so yeah i'll use one of the trees i specifically created for the other side because i think it might look really cool um i just got to remember where i put it that's the question where did i put it i did bring it in i thought i had it under foliage but obviously not it's not under terrain Not under cliffs. Actually, while I'm here, and while I remember, we might bring in another rock to cover up that um, hole. So let's look at this one here. Snappy Girl says, don't blame you. Android Lust says, uh, and the pip, oh, she says, I don't blame you for not wanting to unpack. I know it's terrible, isn't it? Packing and unpacking is the worst. The worst. Might rotate that around like that. Let's bring it down a bit. Make it a bit bigger. Android Lust says, the, and the 5950X works wonders. I've tried stressing it without a CPU, ben, with, with a CPU benchmarker. Nothing I do daily stresses it at all. Well, that's, I think, how many cores are on the 5950 again? It's 32, is it? That is so sweet. I'm pretty sure it's 16 with th hyper-threading, it's like 32. So I'm not surprised you can't stress it. Smurf says, uh, color doesn't match so well. Yeah, we'll fix the color in a minute, Smurf. They are rocks though. I mean, you know, rocks generally don't need to be the same color, but uh, we will make a bit of a correction. Yeah. Um, Snappy Girl says, regarding terrains, I prefer to use World Creator 2. Yeah, World Creator 2 is really good. Well, I use that as well. I use Eon View, which is what this landscape was created using. But the first landscape, uh, we're going to be, uh, we're using World Creator and uh, the last one as well. It's a really good program. It's not too expensive either, considering, you know, what most software these days is worth. 
I don't think I'll probably show you me working with World Creator in on stream, but we do use it at the studio, at the game studio, and we sometimes use it at the Archbiz studio as well, just depending on what it is we're doing. great for detailed height maps yeah it does yeah the, the the workflow to get between world creator and unreal is seamless smooth it's, it's really easy to work between the two Android Lust says 16 so 32 32 cores with hyper threading nice uh, Sniper Girl says nice yeah so there's nice how it says say uh, copy and save let me get let me get just one more cop copy of this rock in because we have to cover up that little hole we've got going on there and all I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this one again I'm going to scale it back and we're going to rotate it around maybe like that and move it over a little bit maybe like that and that's covering up that hole that we have in the mesh there. We can see through. I see that we've got just a little bit hole of a hole there. So we'll make it just a, a little bit bigger. Now that's covering up that hole we have. Um, now Smurf made the point of saying that the color is not matching, but th these are rocks. Rocks don't need to match in color, but We'll uh, jump into um, Photoshop. We'll just do a color correction here. I just want to take out a little bit of the red. Uh, I just need to remember where it's been put. So I'm just going into the shader for it. Uh, cliffs. It's under Cliffs. Okay. Let me do a save all. I have a sip of coffee. Smurf says, rocks from the same rock formation generally do though. Well, if you really want to be pedantic, you are correct. We will be changing the color. Don't stress, don't stress. I will do it in a minute. Um, and you are correct, Smurf. Uh, Android Lust says, I did grab 64 gig of RAM as well. I previously had 16. Man, you went from 16 to 64. Yeah, I love 64 gig. It's great. Never run out of RAM and, you know, I have multiple programs open at the same time doing all sorts of stuff and I've not run out of RAM. It's been sweet. 64 gig is really good. Actually DRAM prices are due to come down soon so that's just the, the room they're going around anyway. So if you are thinking about updating your RAM at the moment you might just want to hold out for a few weeks because yeah the rumor is that prices are coming down on DRAM. They're coming down in graphics cards as well and graphics cards are staying in stock now at least in Australia so I know you guys have been waiting to buy a new graphics card too. Uh, might be time to get one soon. Um, Smurf says, oh yes, RAM, what frequency? Android Lust says 3200 megahertz. Sniper Girl says 64 Jealous only have 32 gig of RAM. Well, 32 is still pretty good, considering most people, like, I think the recommended now is 16 gig. So 32 gig is pretty good, still. Having said that, 64 gig is even better. Um, Smurf says I grabbed 3600 and I think it might be responsible for my machine refusing to boot properly. I use 3600 megahertz as well on my RAM. I haven't had a problem with booting, but you're using an AMD and I'm on Intel. Android Lust says 64 is a bit much to be honest. <laughs> well, better to have too much than too little. <laughs> uh, Smurf, uh, Smurf says I'm using 23 right now and uh, this Python thing sometimes uses 11 all by itself. Well let's do a comparison. Let's see how much RAM I'm using. I've got um, 3D Studio Max open. I've got Photoshop open and we have Unreal open. And I'm just going to go into my task manager and you see that I'm using, I'm using nearly 24 gigabytes of RAM. 
with those three three programs alone. So yeah, there you go. How much memory are we using on the uh, video card? And we're using 16 gigabytes of video memory or 15.5 GP, GPU memory. So yeah, 24 gig, close to 24 gig memory standard RAM and um, nearly 16 gigabytes on the video card. There you go. So it does come in handy to have a lot of RAM sometimes. Smurf says, I do want to be pedantic Phil. <laughs> Fair enough. You can be pedantic if you want. Um, now I am expecting a delivery, guys. I forgot to tell you. Um, I'm pretty sure it'll come after I finish the stream because it's Australia Post, not Amazon. Amazon tend to come in the morning and uh, Australia Post in the afternoon. But just be aware of my buzzer because you know how loud it is. So fair warning. It is due to come, but I think it'll come after I finish the stream. Smurf says I'm using 23 right now. No, sorry, I read that. Um, Android Lust says I ordered RAM when I bought the CPU for the, but for some reason they shipped the RAM from Canada. <laughs> so I just went to a store and bought 32 gigabytes earlier. Oh, you originally ordered 30. Oh, okay, okay. Right, I understand. So you ordered the RAM with the CPU, but then they were shipping it from, from further away. So you went out and bought 32 gig in the meantime, and now you got 64. Be careful with um, timings with RAM. Like you don't want to, you don't want to, you want to try and avoid mixing different brands of RAM, and you want to try and make sure that they're all the, the same timings, like the same megahertz and up, uh, and the timings are, are similar. Otherwise, you can start to run into some compatibility problems. Like your machine could start to reboot and stuff. RAM, RAM is is a really really fiddly thing with a PC if it's not. Yeah, any, anything, one small thing can make your system unstable and RAM is one of those small things that can do that. If you're mixing RAM too much, different brands, different speeds, different megahertz, all that sort of stuff. You don't want to do that. Uh, so that, like the kit that I bought, I bought as a kit. So I bought 64 gig and it all came together in a box. The four, the four slot, uh, sticks came together in a box and they're all sequentially serial numbered so that they're all not part of the same kit. It's just a way to try and avoid any problems with um you might get with RAM. So Andrew Doss says, uh, sorry, Sniper Girl says, hoping video cards lower soon. They should be. They're coming down in Australia. They've, they've dropped in price quite a bit down here in, in Australia. Uh, she says, in stock there? Where? Yeah, they're in stock in Australia. They've been staying in stock now, like most of the computer stores haven't been selling out and they've come down in price, in Australia anyway. I mean, they're still a bit overpriced, but they're, they're not like they were. They're not like double the price they used to be. Android Lust says, need a sub $1,000 GPU in the US? I'm surely there is, I mean, there are sub thousand dollar GPUs in Australia and that's Australian dollars. So you should be able to find one without a problem. I would have thought in the U S Sniper girl says still can't find a video card anywhere. Is it still that bag? So it's, I'm surprised because yeah, in Australia, it's pretty fine. I mean, you can get a video card pretty easily if you really want one now, whether it's AMD or Nvidia. Um, she agrees with Android last Android last says to Smurf, I didn't have any issues booting with 3200 uh, also didn't do a fresh install of windows either well, that's, well if you're not having a problem that's fine uh, you guys know i built a, a new pc for a friend of mine recently um a software engineer um and he did that he he had windows 10 on his old machine and then he just moved i, I moved the hard drive into his new machine and windows found the new hardware and made the, the changes in device manager and everything's been good uh, having said that, though, I always like to do a fresh install of an operating system on a new machine, personally. That's what I did with mine. But yeah, he didn't have a problem just... I mean, Windows had to be reactivated, but that was just a call to Microsoft and that was all done. But I generally, on a new machine, would like to have a fresh install of an operating system. 
So, but I was surprised. Yeah, Windows 10 was fine with the new machine. Just swapping the hard drive into it. Another girl says, uh, though, did see a 3060 Ti on eBay for about 600 total. Was tempted. Uh, Smurf says, it could also be the motherboard of the PSU. Probably the motherboard. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. I try to boot and it doesn't post. Uh -huh. I click the switch on the PSU off for a minute, then back on and then on the second try it boots yeah well that does either point like you said to the PSU or the motherboard they're both new though aren't they the motherboard and the PSU are new Have, and you've updated the BIOS on the motherboard to the latest version of the BIOS that is a strange one RAM can sometimes cause that though like RAM can cause a system not to post correctly, but you'd think if it doesn't, you, you'd think it wouldn't work the second time if it was like maybe a faulty RAM module. Yeah, that's weird. It, it, yeah, I, I would agree. It does point to a PSU or motherboard. On yeah, yeah, it's a strange one. I'm assuming you've tested your RAM and stuff like that to make sure with mem tests to make sure it's it's not faulty. I haven't have, had a faulty RAM module in years. Generally, they're pretty good now, provided you buy you know a reputable brand, not 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 some yum char cheapest chips brand of RAM. Then you should be fine. Sandra Dust says the sniper girl no. <gasps> She says, uh, Snappy Girl says, why? Listed as new? I wouldn't buy anything from eBay, personally. Um, Smurf, Smurf says, I need to look up a guide on manual voltage changes. I think it might need to up it from 1.2 to 1.35. Yep, that, yep, that's, that's, maybe that will help. I mean, remember the more voltage you push through any, any hardware, the hotter the hardware is going to get. So just be aware of that the more heat you're going to generate. But yeah, a 1.35 should be fine on RAM generally. I, I don't over volt or over, over clock any of my parts. Uh, I used to, but I don't bother with it anymore. But if you're having an issue, that can sometimes help fix the, the problem by pumping a little bit more voltage into it. Android Doss says to Smurf, do you have a motherboard speaker? Yeah, could you get those beep codes with a speaker as well. I, I don't have one in my case. No says or oh, lower it. I've never messed with overclocking. Generally if you've got if you've got if you RAM, giving it more voltage is better than giving it less. It, uh, it'll make it generally more stable. I'm assuming we're talking RAM here. 1.3 volt oh, yeah that'd be RAM. Um Snappy Girl says, bought a camera and a drawing tablet on eBay without issue. Yeah, look, I, I'm not saying you, 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 I don't like eBay. I've had problems with eBay. Uh, I, I've not gone into details on stream, um, but yeah, I, I won't use eBay anymore. So that's all I'm saying. Uh, it wasn't because of something I bought or something I necessarily sold. It was something, it was the way eBay behaved and what happened afterwards that caused me concern. So I, I, I avoid eBay. Uh, Smurf says I do, and it doesn't even go to the, go to the beep. Oh, so also you you do have a speaker, and when it doesn't start, it doesn't even beep. Okay, that's different than uh, that's less likely. That's probably more likely to be to be a motherboard problem. I would have thought, but make sure you're up to up to date with the BIOS. Uh, Smurf says in the Q code and the LEDs are stupid also. So is it giving you a Q code on the LED and what does the Q code mean? Because you have an Asus motherboard as well. I have an Asus and it's been pretty pretty good. Um, Andrew Dust says the Sniper Girl because that's nearly double the MSRP. Weird that it did, didn't beep. Yeah, that is weird. Sniper Girl says need an RTX card for the gas station to do the lighting. <laughs> uh, Smurf says, when it boots, it beeps, but the first 
boot issue doesn't get far enough in post to be. Okay, yeah. So when it boots, normally it beeps, but on the first boot, when it when it doesn't boot up on the first boot, it doesn't get far enough into post to beep. Are you getting a Q code though on the LED? Uh, Andrew Dust says I made sure it was the same frequency and voltage. Oh, good with the RAM. Yep, good, good. <laughs> Uh, Snappy Girl says, uh, if I sent you money, could you get me a video card? <laughs> uh, I don't, yeah, I could, but do you pay taxes when it comes into, like, if I was to buy a video card from you guys in the US, say through Amazon or something, uh, I have to pay an import duty on it. So it's 10%, I think, at the moment in Australia. Um, you, just, you want to check to make sure you didn't, wouldn't have to do anything like that as well if I sent you, if I uh, posted you a video card, but I could if you really wanted me to. Uh, but bear in mind, we pay a lot more here than when you guys pay in the United States. But it still seems cheaper from what you've been telling me. Andrew Luff says some 2070s uh, are still selling for $1,000, not even a 3070. See, so really? In the US, uh, is it still a grand US for a 20 set? Look, let's have a look. Let's have a look. I, I'm not doing any work and I'm going to get hate from uh, my YouTube audience. I'm sorry, YouTube. Um... Oh, let's see what is available in Australia, in Australian dollars, remember. Uh, so I, I generally shop at um, PC Case Gear. Let's see what they've got. Uh, graphics cards, let's go with uh, 3070. So you see there's a few in stock. Now the cheapest 3070 is $15.99. That's Australian. So let me do a conversion to American. So AUD to USD. So yeah, it's, it's still more expensive. $1,100 US pretty much for the cheapest 3070. But let's see what else, if there's a 3060. Let's have a look at the 3060 Ti. So the cheapest 3060 Ti, and this, this website is actually probably the most, one of the more expensive ones to buy from in Australia. There are cheaper places you could buy from, but. So it looks like uh, 1050 is probably the cheapest. That's about 770 US. That's for a 3060 Ti. That's sort of giving, but you see that they're in stock. That's my point was they're not running out of stock anymore. They're pretty much staying in stock. They're still a bit overpriced though. Let me have a look at my 30, uh, the 3090. I want to see what, how they're running now. They're in still, you know, there's a few in stock, but yeah, they're, they're really still way overpriced. Way, way overpriced. Like that's, this is the 3090 I have. And I paid 2800 I think. And now you see it's 3600 So, yeah, they're still still overpriced, but staying in stock. That was my point. Um, Snipey Girl says, yeah, 3080 is 1600 Android Lost says, I've had RAM that was faulty before, but it wouldn't boot at all. Yeah, generally what will happen, well that's, but that's the problem Smurf is having. On his first boot, it sometimes doesn't boot. So, generally the motherboard will power up, but you'll get nothing on the screen, it'll stay black, and it just won't post. That can be a RAM problem. Um, Smurf says, I updated, the, I updated the BIOS once, although there's an even newer version from last month that I want to update too. Yes, the RAM passes memtest. Last time I had bad RAM module was in my old laptop of death that baked components to death. Okay, if you run a mem test and mem test is fine, it's unlikely to be the RAM. Um, it could be timings, maybe the, I, I know that AMD motherboards and CPUs are really particular about timings on your RAM, but it's just strange that it happen, it, it posts, it boots okay on the second boot. So. That leads me to believe it's not a RAM problem or a timing problem on the RAM. It's either, the, like you said, the power supply or the motherboard. If you've updated the motherboard to the latest BIOS... Yeah, I don't know, that's a weird one. You think of it was the power supply, it, it wouldn't boot on the second boot. I mean, it's not impossible, but... 
Oh, the joys of uh, PC building, hey? A sniper girl says, wow, that sucks. Thank you, Hellforge. If you want to wishlist the game you see me not working on at the moment, you can click that link, Hellforge popped into Twitch chat to take you to the Steam store page. Um, we will get back to it in a minute, I promise. I've got to catch up with the chat. Andrew Love says, eBay is fine, in my opinion. It's where I bought all, all my parts from, all, this, all from the same seller, which is weird that they shipped one part from Canada. Yeah, when I say I don't like eBay, I'm not saying I don't like the sellers on eBay or people that buy on eBay. All I'm saying is I don't like the company eBay. I, yeah. So I'm, I'm not, not having a go at the sellers. I'm not having a go at what anyone buys or sells on it. I'm having a go at the company eBay. I don't like them. Um, uh, Smurf says, the thing is, once the system has booted, everything is fine. That's what, uh, yeah. Uh, it's only a problem with the first cold boot. And it doesn't happen with restarts from within the OS, just cold boots. Yeah, that is, that's a weird one. What, what could be causing a cold boot issue? Nothing springs to mind. It's very strange. <sighs> yeah, look, I, I would probably lean more toward the power supply now then. Maybe there's some sort of issue with the power supply. You wouldn't think so though. If it boots the second time, then you you know, if there's a problem with the power supply, <laughs> I wouldn't have thought it would boot probably the second time or reboot and not have an issue. Yeah, the only other thing I could think of is maybe even I was going to say maybe the operating system install, but that even that shouldn't be an issue now. If it boots the second time, and that's not me, I don't know. It's weird. I'm thinking maybe the the SSD drive. If you're booting from an SSD, maybe it's maybe look at doing a running a check on that to make sure it's not developing any faults. I, I don't know. It's weird. Um. Android Lost says, that's pretty weird, Smurf. I wouldn't turn off the PC. <laughs> Smurf says, I don't remember what the Q code shows. Uh, I haven't tried troubleshooting the issue since like the first two or three weeks after I built it. It was something undocumented. Oh. Well, that's, then that leads more toward the motherboard. It shouldn't be showing a Q code, a Q code that's not documented. That's very strange. Smurf said, I had to dig really deep into the internet. And the answer was vague. Uh, I find it easy to just leave the machine on 24-7 and deal with this. I have so much else on my plate at once. That's fair enough. And a lot of people leave their machine on all the time now. You know? That's fine. And a lot of, a lot of people don't shut down and restart. I do. Um, they put their machines into sleep mode and stuff, so yeah, it's all fine. I just find with an SSD now, it's really quick. I mean, my I, I, I go from power on to insta in to working in windows within like six seconds with an ssd so i just shut down and restart whenever each day um snappy girl says never mind <laughs> the, the video card prices yes yeah, we pay more here because they have to ship it to australia uh, so they tend to bump up the price a bit here compared to you guys in the us uh, but i want yeah, but you can see that they're staying in stock uh, Android Lust says still high prices. Yep, uh, I'm sure we have GPUs in stock. I'm just not going to pay higher for it. Chances are once you pay higher a month later, it'll go back to normal prices. Uh, yeah, uh, what PSU do you have, Smurf? Uh, Android Lust is asking. And she's back from her bath, Sniper Girl. Uh, Smurf says, I haven't had a bath in so long, you know. I always shower now. I don't have a bathtub in my, in my bathroom. <laughs> Um, Smurf says it doesn't even make it to post though, so it can't be anything OS related. That's very true. That's true. OS related. He says, dang, my PC part picker URL expired. Snappy Girl says my PC is always on. It goes to sleep after like 15 minutes. Smurf says it's an Asus ROG Strix PSU, 850 watt. Yeah, generally Asus is we shouldn't have a problem with an Asus power supply. I've never owned an Asus power supply, but look, I've not heard anything bad about them. Sniper Girl says to Android Lust, I've been saying that for like months and they keep on going higher. Smurf says maybe 750. What's 750? 
Yeah, look, I generally, I've not heard bad things about Aces Power Supplies. Um, I I tend to buy Antec and Seasonic personally, but I've not heard bad things. I'm sure Aces make a good power supply. They all, they all pretty much come from the same manufacturers now anyway. All these different brands of power supplies are all sort of manufactured by maybe two or three different companies. I just want to do some color correction on that texture for that uh, boulder. Where is it? So there's other soil banks, central rock, that's the color. And we just want to take a little bit of red out of it, I think. So we're going to do a color balance. And we're going to pull out a bit of the red, pull in a little bit more of the blue. What color am I matching to? I'm matching to more of a brown, oh, no, more of a dark what color is it? Yeah. Uh, let's go with shadows. Highlight. We might even le level it down a little bit, I think. Yeah, again, you see the histogram is not completely great, so we'll bring it down so it's a little bit darker. Let's try that. Let's save as. And we're going to save it as a PNG and we'll swap it out. We'll call it Central Rock. Okay, let me find the material. Let's import the new one. Central rock. Turn off virtual texturing. We want to swap that out for this one. Let me check that it actually did change that. Again, that, that you know that I'm just going to pull in that um, asset again. That doesn't look like a change to me at all. Um, let's have a look. Just going to pull another another version of it in. No, it, it did. That is the color. All right, we might just swap it up a bit more. It's, it's still got too much red in it. So let's remove a bit more red bring in a bit more blue Actually, and we might level it up just a little bit more as well. Level it down, I mean. Okay, we'll try that. And of course, now we need to find this material again and re-import it and of course it's going to come in as a virtual texture again and 
I think I might have taken too much red out of it now. So let's make some adjustments again. Let's bring back a little bit of the red. I think what I might do here too is I'm going to do a copy and a paste and then I'm going to make an adjustment here to the hue and we bring in a bit more red and I'm going to let's play with our blending mode here see what we can get might look interesting See what that looks like. Back into Unreal. Re import the rock texture. Now we're getting a better mix of between the two. Yeah, I think that'll work. I am going to be, um, well, I'll either do it soon or part of the beauty pass is we're going to be coming in and uh, adding other sort of smaller rocks over these rocks so I know that you, if you'll notice here the resolution of the texture of that rock is a lot lower than the resolution of the texture of this one uh, but we'll fix that as, as, the, as part of the beauty pass or the polish pass as they sometimes call it I like to call it a beauty pass but uh, other people call it a polish pass. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll look at that once we do the polish. At the moment we're just concerned with getting the actual uh, design and layout of the forested section correct. Uh, but I think that'll work. That'll, that'll be okay. They, they match enough now that they're not going to be noticeable. Um, but tree, the tree, that was what I was <laughs> initially looking at um, putting in before we got distracted. Oh, the wattage says 750. Smurf says, I wanted a Corsair, but it was out of stock. <laughs> uh, Smurf says, would have we gotten to see Sonic if the ROG hadn't come in stock, like uh, minutes before it was going to make, I was going to make the purchase. <laughs> yeah, the C I love C-Sonic, so I've never had a problem. Both my main machines are C-Sonic. Smurf says, I need to make friends with someone local who has a spare PSU that I can borrow for testing. Android Lust says, not entirely sure, but most PSUs are generally good. Yeah, they're generally, you've got to be really unlucky to get a bad PSU these days. Well, actually, it, apart from um, Gigabyte, don't buy a Gigabyte power supply. Um, is it Steve's Hardware, the guy with the long hair? 
I watched a video he released a couple of days ago on YouTube where gigabyte power supplies that they were giving away when you bought a video card were blowing up. And uh, so yeah, don't don't go with a gigabyte. But not that, that brand anyway. That that particular model of power supply wasn't good. Uh, and it took out a 3080. He, well, during their testing, he said it um, basically destroyed one of their 3080s when the power supply blew up. Which is why I say to you guys, make sure you buy a good branded power supply. It's really important. Don't cheap out on your power supply because it, it uh, you know, powers everything in your computer. And uh, if it dies, you can kill other bits in your, of your computer. So it's really, really important to make sure you get a good power supply. trustworthy power supply. Yeah, of course they're pretty good too. EVGA is supposed to be pretty good. And again, I've never had an EVGA or Corsair, but I have, I've heard good things about both of those brands. Um, yep. Android Lust is not entirely sure, so especially when so yeah, I agree Android Lust, usually power supplies, providing you're buying a decent brand, are, are okay. Oh, we'll just copy and save. Uh, Sniper Girl says you mean power supplies blowing up isn't a good thing? Oh, who would have thought, hey? Who would have thought that a, a, a power supply blowing up wouldn't be good for your components? <laughs> but yes, no, no, not such a good thing. Uh, anyway, I'm looking for this uh, this tree. Where did I put it? Where would I put it? Where would I put it? None of foliage? No, I checked foliage, didn't I? Oh, why didn't I put it under foliage? That's where I've got everything else. Why, 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 Phil? Why wouldn't you have done that? Hero trees, that's where I put it. <laughs> it's under hero trees, okay. So let's bring in one of these hero trees. Now, where do I want to put it? Uh, maybe, maybe somewhere here. Uh, we'll go with, we'll go with this one. And I'm just going to rotate it around to see if I can't find an interesting silhouette for it. And do I want the branch overhanging the path? Yeah, I think I do. I think I do. Okay, I just want to make sure it's in the right spot. Might just move it over a little bit. Because oh, as a player, it's always interesting when you're moving underneath of uh, of vegetation. It always it's an interesting visual. So I don't mind that you actually have to walk through the leaves to get through the path. I think it's, that's a good thing. Let's just pull back here so I can have a look overall. Okay. Uh, let's just move up closer to where the actual uh, outhouse is. Because uh, we have a second hero tree here and another hero tree might be really cool here. I mean, I, I quite like the light ray, so I, I want to probably try and avoid putting a big tree here. That doesn't mean we can't have one here. So let's see what one of these looks like. Pull it up a little bit. Um, We'll rotate it around, see if we can get a more interesting looking silhouette, but I don't quite, I, I quite like the way that the trunk 
bends in toward the outhouse, but uh, we'll just see if there, any other silhouette might look more interesting. No, I think the way it was was probably the best way. And we still have our nice light beams happening, which is good. I'm just thinking I might bring another copy of these steps in through here. So let's duplicate this one. And move it. Rotate them a little bit. And we'll just pull them up a little bit. So steps here, steps here. Along the path, steps here. And I think we lose the path a bit here, but that's okay because people will be drawn to the outhouse, so they're just going to go straight straight ahead. Um, I may just paint in a little bit more grass through here, I think. Yeah. We might just bring this down a little bit. Yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll paint a little bit more of the long grass through here. So let's go, let's just do a quick save. And go into the foliage tool again. Rough grass, that's the long one. But I, I do want to be able to paint on the um, mesh now here because I want some of the long grass growing over the base. So I'm going to turn static mesh back on. I might just reduce my brush size a little bit. So I've got a bit more control. grass in here. And maybe a little bit through there. Maybe a bit through there. Gonna go into selection mode here. There's a couple of these grass 
bits you see that they're not actually following the terrain correctly so I'm just going to remove any that are sticking out. Just rotate this one around. This one over a bit. Destroyed all the good in your life. from another time. Your words will never die. Your words will never die. Move this one down. Let's go back into paint mode and we might paint a little bit more select mode and fix some of these up. Let's do a quick save. I'm not going to copy. I didn't catch up with the chat. Yeah, uh, Android lost says Euro trees. <laughs> what do you mean Euro trees, Android lost? I'm not sure what you're asking. Uh, again, let's just go through and fix some of these that um, haven't placed themselves quite right. Okay, let's put something in through here. Um, I'm just going to go out of the uh, foliage mode. Again, make sure I do it. Save all. That's my phone going off in the background. Um, 
I just better check it. Hang on, guys. Sorry. Okay. Um, Andrew Doss says you called them Euro trees. <laughs> I call them Euro trees. <laughs> yeah, they're, um, I think they're oak trees from memory. I think they're oaks. Don't quote me on that, but I, th I think they're oak trees. Again, yeah, I can't quite remember, but I think they're oaks. Um, Let's, we need something over here, I think. So let's go back into our terrain. No, not terrain, foliage, I think it is. There we go. Um, and I think we need some bushes here. So let's go with, uh, let's go with the uh, elderberry, black elderberry, because it's, it's got a yellowy tint to it, like this tree here, a reddy yellowy tint. So that could be pretty cool make it quite large and we're going to put it behind the outhouse help wood says if euros grew on trees we'd be rich if only hey And again, I'm, I'm sort of like uh, positioning the camera so I can, as, as I place things, so I can sort of frame it up. We might go a little bit larger here on this bush. Let's rotate it and see if we can find a more interesting silhouette. And again, I'm avoiding going too high because I like the look of the light ray, so I don't want to block that. Sniper Girl says, year if only. Andrew Doss says, to help forge, how's the Meyer Adventures going? How are the Meyer Adventures going, Hellforge? Okay, so we have a bush there. I'm just trying to find my path here. I think we need a bush here. Let's go with, uh, there's a green version of this. <coughs> Pardon me. Elderberry bush, elderberry flowers, this one. And let's just make it a little bit bigger. And maybe we'll move it over a bit. And let's rotate it around. Look at it from the other direction. We still need more bushes in through here, so we'll duplicate it. Scale it and rotate it. Okay, that's fine. Let's let's put a tree in here. Not one of the hero trees though, just a normal tree. We might go with um let's go with maybe let's see what one of the white birches looks like. I like the way that branch overhangs like that. I think that's an interesting looking, it makes for an interesting looking scene. Make sure it's down on the ground. We need some balance happening now, so let's get another white birch on this side. And there's a second variety, so we'll use that. Let's 
So we're not putting any, we're still, we're still going to have guard rays because we're not blocking behind here. So that's good. Okay, I think we need need a bush through here. So again, let's go with the um, elderberry. Oops, make it quite large though. And I think a bush over over here. Um, we have azalea bushes, but the azalea bushes are more part of the landscape grounds of the house. I probably want to avoid putting them out here in the forested areas. I mean, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. So we're going to have to stick to what we got. Um, Helpwood says trial expired, he's talking about Maya. Uh, and I haven't tried uh, juggling different accounts to see if it's a hardware lock or not. I need to finish the uh, Remington 870 rework before I start picking a new modeling program. It was only really time sensitive when I had a job interview lined up, but uh, that fell apart, so now I can take my time. Well, that's no, I'm sorry to hear that the, uh, the interview fell apart, Helpwood. Uh, so yeah, some of these plants we um, we actually are part of the, the the estate grounds, so we probably want to avoid using them out here. Um, but let's we've got this one of these. Actually, we've got some conifers. I don't think we used any conifers in the forest yet, so we could use some of those. Uh, let's see what one of these looks like. Um, yeah, don't know, don't know, don't know, don't know about that one. I mean, that one might be okay in the background over here. Let's see if we can move it. It's actually in the background that I think is what I want to want to do here. I want to try and um, block out the background a bit behind the tree. I'm just going to angle it a bit too to make the tree look a bit more interesting. Helford says the interview happened. Oh, I just didn't get the job because I don't know Maya. Okay, fair enough. Well, look, every interview is a good interview because it gives you more experience and you know what they're going to ask you next time for the next job interview. So no interviews ever are wasted interviewers. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, this was something I used. I have them lying on the ground and in the forester's section on the other side of the building. Just thought it might be interesting to add something a little bit dead there. Because, you know, why not? Uh, I still think we need something maybe in here. I'm just not sure what. What have I got? What do I have? We have uh, these um, Scots pine trees. They could look interesting. Let's have a look. We haven't used them a lot. We use them in the grounds a little bit, but we, we have not used them a lot anywhere. So. They're a bit tall. It's not really what I had in mind for that spot. 
I don't know that that's going to work. Yeah, it's probably not what I want. What else do we have? Well, we have um, some maples that are uh, changing colour. They might be interesting. Let's have a look at one of them. if we rotate it it's just good to sometimes add a bit of color so not everything is just green 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 Andrew says, I'm not sure on how to get another free trial, but another opportunity will come. Andrew uh, Helford says, the thing I was thinking about trying was just to activate the trial on a different email. Worth a, worth a shot. Um, Helford says, yeah, it was a good experience having a face-to-face -face with a recruiter. I learned a few things doing it. Yeah, it's, it's always, it's never wasted effort. Android Lost says, I bet another email will work if you ever need it again. Yeah, try another email. Uh, I don't know, sometimes they can... Sometimes they'll, they'll work on your IP address, but I, it doesn't hurt to try another email. What do you got to lose? Uh, I think uh, we need a bush in here, so we're going to go with um, we're going to go with the elderberry again, with the different coloured elderberry, the darker one. I'm sort of getting away from where I'm supposed to be. I'm sort of like meant to be doing this section of the steps. <laughs> so I'm just trying to work out if I need to add what I need to add where. I think we could do with a bush here. So let's choose the green elderberry, the flowering one. Just undo that because I didn't do a uniform scale. Again, I'm trying to sort of block out some of the view from the background here because, yeah, w w which will happen once we start moving to those back areas anyway. But. Just move these steps over a little bit. We have a problem with the grass there, so I'm just going to go back into um, foliage mode.
something here and I think we might go with another dead looking tree. What's well, not dead, just leafless. We need something here. Let's scale it up a bit. some sort of bush here. Let's go with... Let's try this one. I want to leave some sections open for the player, to make it easier for the player to move around. I don't want to like fill the entire level with trees. I'm just trying to frame up the steps here at the moment though. We need something... Something here. Copy and save. Let's do a save and I can have a copy here. Good suggestions. So what can we... We need something just here. What have I got? I want something substantial but not too big. So I want to put another tree here. Um, but I want something... Something to fill a space and overhang the path a little bit. That's basically what I'm looking for. We haven't used the Monsteria um, um, or Chanel as you guys in the US call them. We call them Monsteria here in Australia. We could do that. I mean, generally they were they were created for the, the estate grounds, like the azalea bushes, but... Nothing saying we couldn't add some there. Helpwood says, the plan I have is to start applying to everywhere when I have the shotgun rework ready. Uh, that'll give me three good pieces. That sounds like a good plan. Um, and from what I've seen of the pistol and stuff, it's... But those, having look, I've always said to you guys, don't show too much, like, you, less is more. So when you're, in, when, when you're applying for jobs and these people are looking over your work, they only have a short, a short amount of time to look at a lot of different people. And I know because I've, you know, I, I'm involved in, in looking at people's work for the studios that I work for. Um, so sending them 20 pieces when when three good pieces is really all you need is probably better because they won't have time to look at you know i always say don't no, no more than 10 no more than 12 i think i said in the pre previously so don't add more than 12 pieces to your portfolio anything more than that it's starting to get too much for people to look at they're not going to it, it they're not going to look at it all and the more pieces you include the more likely you are to include something that's not up to the same standard as the rest of your work. Do you know what I mean? So if you're trying to pad your portfolio out with a lot of different work, not all of it's going to be to the, to the same level. So the fewer pieces you have in your portfolio, 
the less chance there is that you're going to show them something that's maybe not quite as good. Uh, and and you, you save them time too, because they just don't have the time to be looking at a lot of different pieces of artwork. Um, so yeah, sounds like a good plan to me. Less is more. And and don't go over 12 in your ever, because <laughs> it's pointless. You're, they won't look at your work properly if you do that. Um, yeah, we could go with a Monsteria or a Chanel, or we could go maybe with, um, um, we have uh, some uh, sp spruces, some conifers. I don't think we've used those. I don't know really that I want to use a conifer out here though. No, maybe. Let's make an interesting grouping though. So let's duplicate it. Let's um, rotate it a little bit so it's not quite straight. Uh, let's scale it maybe up so it's a bit bigger than the other one. We'll move it over a little bit. We'll rotate it in a little bit. Uh, it's actually sitting on the path at the moment, so I don't want that. Let's move it. So we want to move that one and that one. Back in here. Maybe back just a little bit more. And let's just duplicate this one one more time. Because why have two when you can have three? Oh, let's scale this one down. And rotate it out a little bit. I think another bush back in here. So let's go with, again, let's go with this uh, colored one here. grass there that's not quite right so let's fix that let me go down the bottom of the hill here so we can see what how we're going how we go for time oh we're out of time um, so we come up the path, up the path. Yeah. Let's do a quick save. I want to check out uh, Smurfberry's um, image he's posted here for the program that he's working on. Yeah, that looks really cool. It looks really cool, actually. And this was with the um, the race condition, wasn't it? Yeah, I like that. I think that looks really cool. Which is a nice shrubbery, yeah, but this this looks really cool, Smith. 
Smith says, yeah, that's with the race condition, which uh, partially explains the artifacts. Yep. Android Lust says, no idea that the hell it's done. It looks really cool. It's coming along, even with the race condition, even, isn't it? I think it's, it's looking good. Um, I think that we might leave it there for today, guys and girls. We haven't finished this section yet. There's a, a bit more stuff I want to do um, for the pathway. Like we might look at change, swapping up the texture a bit. We'll see how we go. Uh, we, obviously, we need to add leaves, all that sort of jazz. We haven't actually finished setting up this area yet, anyway. But I think we can do that when I come back. Now, and I'm not on. I'm, remember, I'm not streaming next week, but I'm back the week after. So no streams next week. Back the week after. We'll pick up where we left off here and we'll finish off this section with the outhouse and then we're going to move to the other side of the landscape because we have to set up a little scene over there as well. Thank you, uh, Hellforge. <laughs> if you want to uh, join the Fielders 3D Discord server, click that link, Hellforge, popped into Twitch chat. Uh, yes, I do want to thank you guys for hanging out with me and for watching. I really do appreciate it. Um, I will be back Monday, not next week, the week after. You guys and girls have a great weekend. Um, Stay happy, healthy, and safe. And I'll see you all in a week. See you guys.